So you need to go to the Water Quality Parameters Quest. This link here opens up Google Classroom. Log in with your Google account and look for the Water Quality Research Notes assignment. That's got a graphic organizer to help you uh, organize your notes. Clicking on this link right here to go to the following website will take you to a web page with links that I have put together for you to help you learn uh, about stream temperature and, and why we need to know temperature of the water. So going to the very first website, I'm going to right click and open it in a new tab. So I've got my links here and I've got my information on another tab so I don't lose it. So the first thing is, what is water temperature? And it says here, this is the definition, a physical property expressing how hot or cold water is. Now you're going to want to say that at your presentation. Don't assume people know that that's what temperature means. Now hot and cold are both arbitrary terms. It doesn't tell you how hot or how cold. So temperature can be further defined as a measurement of the average thermal energy one of the energies we learned about of a substance and thermal energy is the amount of kinetic energy in the atoms and molecules so how fast they're moving and how far apart they are and you should know that solids are slower moving closer together liquids faster moving farther apart gases the fastest moving and the farthest apart so the temperature measures the average kinetic energy of the atoms and the molecules pretty cool this energy can be transferred between substances. We learned that energy transfers. Well, you should know heat can transfer. If you've cooked anything, you know that the heat energy transfers from the fire to the pan to the food in the pan. Now, in water, we get light directly warming water, but also warms the air quicker and then warms the water that way. And water can also cool the air surrounding it. Uh, and, and that's an important thing to realize. And I've got graphs for you of how the water temperature in Chimicum Creek changed overnight. I've got a graph that I did for 24 hours and one that I did for three weeks uh, over the summer and I think in the early spring. So you'll be able to see the changes in temperature of the creek water. And I included a, the soil temperature so you can see how they change differently. So water temperature is important because it influences other parameters such as dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen people are learning that colder water actually holds more dissolved oxygen. So fish survive better when the water's cold because they have more oxygen to breathe. It also affects how toxic the water can get if there's pollution in it. Um, and pH and water density. So water temperature can affect metabolic rates and biological activity. Metabolic rates means uh, how much fish can take energy from the food they eat and, and do things with the oxygen they breathe out of the water. So the colder the water is, it affects, let's see, so what does it say here? It influences chosen habitats of a variety of aquatic life. Uh, for example, aquatic plants flourish in warmer temperatures, while some fishes, such as trout or salmon, prefer colder streams. They do better in, in that temperature. Now, this is a, the warmer the temperature, the more metabolism a, a, a living thing can do. So for example, creatures like snakes, they can't do much when it's cold. They need the, the warmth from the outside environment, sun, warm air, to do their living. Some fish, or it says most fish, a 10 degrees Celsius increase in water temperature will double the rate of physiological function. So it'll increase their metabolism. They can do more. Temperature fluctuations, so changes in temperature, can also affect the behavior choices of aquatic organisms, such as moving to warmer or cooler water. Plants are also affected by water temperature. While some plants 
tolerate cooler waters, most prefer warmer temperatures. And temperature can inhibit plant respiration and photosynthesis. So algal photosynthesis, like algae and algal bloom, will increase with temperature, though different species will have different peak temperatures. So if you've got warm water and nutrients go in there like fertilizers and stuff like that from farms or, or lawns, that will make the algae reproduce like crazy. And that's how you get an algal bloom. And if you did your, your studies for water pollution, you'll know that when that algae dies, the bacteria that eat it up take a lot of oxygen and that will lower the DO of that water. Now, high water temperatures also increase the solubility and toxicity of certain compounds. So if pollution gets into the water and the water's warm, it's worse than if the water's cold. Now, ammonia is known for its, its toxicity. Toxicity, it's more poisonous at high pH levels. But temperature can also influence it. At low temperatures, a neutral pH, the following equation remains shifted to the left, producing the non-toxic ammonium ion. And uh, ammonium ion is NH4. But for every 10 degree increase, so the warmer the water gets, this, this the ratio of unionized ammonia to ammonium doubles. So what that means is that the ammonia that wasn't so bad as the water gets warmer is the bad ammonia. And that's just one example of how raising water temperature can cause it to be, make pollution worse, more poisonous, more toxic. This is important for you to know with, with uh, your, your DO classmates, is that as the temperature increases, as it gets warmer, the water can hold less and less dissolved oxygen. And I think that's enough from this website. Looking at the other one, stream temperature. So this one gets into the fish. This is one you're going to want to take uh, important notes and share this with the kids at the Youth Summit, especially your salmon expert. Because this tef talks about different types of salmon um, and the water temperatures they will tolerate and the ones they will thrive in. So you've got eggs and water temperatures for eggs. And, and make sure you say it in both Celsius and Fahrenheit so people who don't know Celsius can still understand. The juveniles, you've got some temperatures here that will affect it. And then adults. And this part tells you the effects of diseases and competition. And if you don't get this part, call me over and ask me and I'll help you make sense of it. Uh, but really, these temperatures are what you're going to want to record and share, especially on your website because that's what's gonna be important for people to know when they come to your website. Now this next one, water quality, quality and temperature. Now, because most aquatic organisms are cold-blooded, which means they are unable to internally regulate their core body temperature, like reptiles, um, temperature exerts a very major influence on their biological activity and how well they grow. Um, the higher the water temperature, the greater the activity. They're more active. Fish, insects, zooplankton, phytoplankton, and other aquatic species all have preferred temperature ranges. As temperatures get too far above or too below this range, they will suffer the number of individual and, and, and species will decrease, especially in that area. So we don't want that to happen to Chimicum Creek. That's why we're monitoring it. That's why we take care of it. Um, this gives you reasons for natural variation, why temperature would change normally. Um, so read that one. 
and then this one will tell you the expected impact of pollution, how pollution can affect the temperature of a, crank, of a creek. Thermal pollution, artificially high temperatures, almost always occurs as a result of discharge of municipal or industrial effluents, which means it comes from factories or cities where their water's cooling something, and then it just comes out and gets dumped right into rivers or streams or creeks. We don't have that here. We got our creeks going through farms, through houses, or not houses, but through people's properties, and um, through pretty, Chimicum Valley is pretty good about not uh, causing thermal pollution in our creek. So this will give you some great information uh, about that. And then the last one, temperature change. So this one can tell you things that change temperature. So, or, or temperature effects. So we already know this one. Uh, temperature can affect the chemical characteristic of a creek, like dissolved oxygen, photosynthesis, metabolic rates of animals. Again, it says the same thing in different ways, so you can get it. Start to really understand this. There's thermal pollution again. Now, cutting down of trees. We already know this is bad. That's why we have planted trees. That's why this year we potted plants so they can be planted at the riparian zones because keeping the temperature low is our number one priority. And planting trees not only absorbs more carbon, but it provides shade. It's, it's a very great thing to do to help our ecosystem. So that's what this website is telling you there. So hopefully this will give you enough information to do a great job on your presentation and provide great information on your website on how temperatures affect streams and fish and people and what we can do to keep it safe and healthy.